this is a ribbed or serpentine belt and these started showing up on Mercedes in the mid 1980s. I feel they're more efficient and they usually last longer than the old V belts, but they don't last forever. And there's gonna be times when you'll want to change them, particularly if you've just gone out and purchased an old Mercedes. I see these uh, are neglected all the time and people don't change them until there's, <laughs> there's chunks falling out. But usually the first sign of impending problems is cracking that'll show up in the ribs themselves. Now, if you look down, here's an old belt that I pulled off an old 300 SE. And if you look at it, it doesn't look too bad. And if you were looking down in the engine compartment at this belt, you'd say, oh, that looks fine. But watch what happens when I take and turn it this way. You see that? Look at the extent of the cracking in the belt. And it's this point you're going to want to change it. Now, granted, it's not always easy to do this down in the engine compartment. Look at my 300 SL here. Uh, just getting down in there to change the belt is going to be a challenge. And even looking at it is not that easy. You'll have to get down in there, twist the belt, and try to look at the condition of the ribs on the belt itself. When you look at the new belt, you can see there's absolutely no discrepancies, no cracking at all when you reverse the bend in the belt. I highly recommend, if you do intend to replace your uh, serpentine belt on your older Mercedes that you use Continental belts. Uh, from my experience, these are the best belts on the market. They tend to run the quietest and they tend to last the longest. Sometimes when you go to inspect these serpentine belts, uh, they may look okay. I remember I had this 190 2.6 one time that it was making this clicking noise and it was driving me crazy. I thought it was actually something wrong with the engine. And I finally got suspicious of the belt and I had to remove the belt from the engine and I couldn't believe it. There was a chunk, a chunk missing right out of these ribs. And every time it would come around and hit one of the pulleys, it would make this ticking sound that you swore was metallic, and, and, but it wasn't, it was a belt. So visual inspection is good on the car, but sometimes if you suspect a belt problem, you cannot see the entire surface of the belt down inside the engine compartment, so you may have to remove it. So get out there and inspect your serpentine belt. If you see any signs at all of the rubber on the rib starting to crack, I recommend you replace it. I know some of you are thinking, but Kent, you didn't tell us how to replace the serpentine belt. That can be a real challenge, particularly on the 103 and 104 engines. You're, you're working down in a very restricted space and it's very difficult to even get to and loosen up the belt tensioner and then readjust it properly. This uh, sequence that has to be followed, I'm going to have more information and instructions on my website on how to remove and replace these serpentine belts properly. One tip I will share with you though, is that if you intend to do this yourself, I recommend that you either get your camera or get a piece of paper and a pencil and plan before you ever remove the old belt that you either photograph how that belt goes back on or make a little drawing because let me tell you, a lot of people get these belts off and they become totally confused on when they put them back on. It's like, well, do I go over the top of this pulley or I, do I go under this pulley? And if you haven't done this before, it can be very frustrating. So I highly recommend you do that for, you know, continental belts and more repair information. Be sure and check out my website.